Father, we just come to you in this moment right now. A praise. We just ask right now, Father, that in all that you want to do this morning, all that you want to do, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you're anointed. to come to a place of life change and transition. Lord, that we would receive and accept all that the Spirit of God meant for us on that Resurrection Sunday. God, we magnify you. We glorify you. We honor you. might be the first time you've been in a Pentecostal service. It's important for you to understand and know that when people are excited about the things of God, we're talking about a series, and it's a series called Liberated. You know, when somebody's been set free, when, when people run, when people clap, when people shout, you don't know why they're running why they're clapping or they're shouting. I had a pastor friend of mine say this once before. If you knew why they were running, if you knew why they were shouting, if you knew why they were clapping, if you knew what God did in their life to set them free, you might run and clap and shout with them. Because the church is made up of a group of people that are pretty broken and busted. We're a group of people that don't have it all together. We're a group of people that found something. You know, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall, and all of the king's horses and all of the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. But there's a king that can put us back together again, and his name is Jesus. Amen. Went back to an old nursery rhyme. That wasn't even in the notes. Hallelujah. So I just, I want to welcome you to Lighthouse Church. You can be seated if you can. We're going to try to preach a message. The reason I say if you can, I used to get picked on also all the time by a pastor friend of mine. I served Pastor Maury Davis for eight and a half years or something like that. And he used to say, why do you say if you can? Because sometimes you might not just have the ability to sit down. Maybe your stand-up in you is so great, you just got to stand up. Well, stand up. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. He used to pick on me all the time about stuff I would say like that. I want to welcome you to Lighthouse Church. If this is your first time to Lighthouse, we hope the experience has been warm and welcoming. But most importantly, we hope that you've sensed the presence of God. We're going to have song in just a few moments. We've got, we've got some things that are still going to con continue the, ser the service. But I want, to, I want to thank my worship team. They have worked hard. The band, the the media team, the choir. There's just something that elevates Arvin when the choir is here. And I want to thank you, choir. Thank you so much for all of your hard work in putting this together. And the media team that oftentimes in the back gets forgotten. And I just want to thank them. But I want to stay focused on the word for just a moment. The Bible tells us in the book of John chapter 18, it says in John chapter 18, and, and, and let me give you a little foundation of where we're going. I, oftentimes people preach, they oftentimes preach the, 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 the series of Easter from, 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 from the beginning to the end. And I've kind of messed it up this month. I, I started in the middle. And so as I started our series called Liberated in the Middle, uh, I, there's, there's this entire passage in the book of John chapter 18. And it's Jesus, he's been, he's been taken from the garden, and, and, and as he's been taken from the garden, he has now been presented to Pilate, and as he's been presented to Pilate, there's this discourse that happens between the two of them. 
And, and the discourse says something like this. It says, I hear you, you say you're a king. And, 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 and he responds, you know, I'm a king, but not like a king like you think you know. And, and, and all of this happens. But, but, but there's, a, there's a passage in there, and it's this passage that was the foundation for the entire sermon series. We've been talking about the series or the subject matter of being liberated. And, 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 and we, if we don't understand why Jesus came, then therefore we will never understand the entirety of this book or why we've even met this morning. If we don't understand what, what Jesus came to do, and the Bible says in John chapter 18 and verse number 37, he said he's responding to Pilate and he says, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Can you say truth? Jesus had been preaching uh, earlier in the book of John and it was recorded as such and we'll start our series and end our series with this verse. But the Bible says in John chapter 8, Verse number 31 and 32, but we're going to go to 32. And in John chapter 8 and verse number 32, it says, You shall know the truth. That word truth is the same truth that Jesus came to declare. He said, there's going to come a day when you're going to know the truth. There's going to come a day when you're going to accept the truth. You're going to see the truth. You're going to believe the truth. You're going to recognize the truth. And when you do, the Bible says, by Jesus' own words, if you've got a red-letter Bible, it says it this way. He says, you shall know this truth, or that truth, or the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It shall set you free. And so as we've been in this series, I don't know how you ended up here this weekend. You know, we had a wonderful service on Friday, and this is the second service in our series of Easter services. And, and I don't know how you ended up here. Maybe you came because somebody invited you. Maybe they invited you nicely, and maybe they invited you not so nicely. You need to go to church. So maybe you got, maybe you got invited by a family member or a friend. And if you're an invited or an invitee from one of my family members or friends of our church, I want to say thank you, family members or friends of our church, because of the fact that you invited someone. You might have come because it's what you do on Easter. It's what we do. Well, we go to church on Easter, you know. That, there's at least two Sundays a year that you got to go to church, right? It's Easter Sunday and whatever the Christmas service is, right? Those are the two services. You got to go to church. I'm, a, if the, you know, the, I know I'm okay if I go to those two services. Well, that's a lie, but I mean, I'm going to let you believe it for a minute. You got to go to church more than just two services a year. That's uh, the, to, to be a healthy believer. You don't you don't eat two meals a year, you know. So we'll, we'll leave that alone. Okay. So, or you're here because you got a mailer. You know, a couple of times a year we'll send out a mailer and that mailer gets mailed out and it's just an invitation and it was a black thing. It said liberated with breaking chains on the front with, a, with the, 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 the tomb opening up and all of those kinds of things. And on the back of it, it starts with this. It just simply says, on every mailer that we've done since I've been designing the mailers, it's, it says Jesus loves you. Because ultimately, if you never come in, step foot in our church, you know, uh, we sent out almost 2,000 mailers and at least 2,000 families read the words, Jesus loves you this Easter. At least, if, if I don't have three or 400 people for the weekend, the reality is at least 2,000 people heard that they were loved by Jesus. But you know what? You read those words and you thought to yourself, well, is that really true? I'm curious, and maybe you're here because of a mailer. You know, ultimately, my hope is, is, is all of the above. And, and, and ultimately, I don't know if you gathered by the, 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 the tenor of the songs or the types of songs that were sung. The, the reality is we've been preparing for you to hear and to witness something that could challenge your heart. 
We, we, we've created something that puts you in remembrance. There's two people that, that really the Easter service is created for. It's created for the church folk so that they're reminded of all that Jesus did for them. Or it's created for the people that don't know Jesus. And it's a, it's a celebration to let them know that, hey, there is a Savior that loves them, cares for them, and wants them to be free. Amen. So it's really, there's only two groups of people that we're really talking to on an Easter Sunday morning. For the church folk, it should be something that is celebratory on the inside. For the individual that maybe hasn't tried Jesus or hasn't met Jesus or hasn't had a significant relationship in Jesus, Easter is one of those services that challenges their heart, maybe causes them to ask a question or even wonder. You know, it's not necessarily a politically correct service. It's not necessarily a popular service. It's popular in the church, but, but uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to throw this out there because I know that I've got a lot of Christian friends that are angry today. And let me tell you why they're angry today. Because there was something that was done today, signed into law by our president, and I'm not going to articulate all of the details of it, but today was a celebratory day for the transgender community. And it was signed to start and to be on today. Now let me remind all of my Easter family friends. Easter changes every year. So March 31st might remain the same. and They can have that day. But the reality is, is Jesus is bigger than any law that was signed. Can I say that? Amen. 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 Because ultimately at the end of the day, I want you to know that Jesus is the truth. The truth that we were talking about just a moment ago, Jesus is the truth and only Jesus can set us free. We can try it all we want. It doesn't work doing it ourselves. I don't know if you've ever been like me. I've tried to do it on my own and then finally I say, oh God, you know, sometimes that's my life. That's how I live. I, I, I try, you know, God, I got this. I got this. I got this. I can take care of it. But at some point we've got to say God and he's like I've been waiting for you you know so the reality is is Jesus is the truth and only Jesus can set us free and so we come on this Easter Sunday morning and this resurrection Sunday morning and over the course of the past four weeks we have been focusing on this subject matter of being liberated but what is Easter even for the people in the room that, that have been church folk, even for the people that are maybe visiting today because you've driven by or you've gotten a mailer, Easter and the power of the resurrection often get shrouded within the repetition and of, of a redundant religious story. And so what happens is, is this day just gets, it, it just becomes pomp and circumstance. It's a new dress, a new hat. It's a, it's a, it's a new outfit. It's an it's a, a Easter egg hunt. And we've got that for the kids because you know what? The kids are going to get Easter eggs today and candy, but they're going to learn about Jesus all the same. Amen. See, so, so, but this is a story that we talk about at least once a year. We talk, we pull out the cross and we present the crown of thorns. We present all that the cross is. But this morning I want to share a thought with you as we talk about this potentially repetitious and redundant religious story. It is so much more than that. As a matter of fact, we've been taught about the immaculate birth. We can go back and to celebrate it all the way to the Christmas moment and you read and the Bible talks about that Jesus made himself of no reputation. He came in the form of a servant or a slave and, and he, put, he threw off his divinity and put on humanity so that he would live for you and me. So we hear about this immaculate birth that was heralded by the heavenly hosts. And we, 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 we read about or we've, we've been taught about this, the improbability or the impossibility of someone living their entire life with no sin. We read, we read and, and, and have been taught about the, the reality of the unmatched authority by which he spoke while he lived. And we, we've been taught about the miracles and the signs and the wonders that he did. We know about this triumphant entry into Jerusalem. The Bible talks about it, how he, how he rode in and as he came over the hill and he saw Jerusalem, the Bible says that he wept that they would receive him. And he comes in and as he comes in, the palm branches of which were celebrated last week, the palm branches were waved and they were yelling, Hosanna, Hosanna. And they were celebrating this Jesus that was going to save mankind. 
we read about and we know in the Last Supper, the Passover Supper. He's, he's sitting there with his disciples and he's making declaration of, of, of what's about to take place and what should happen. We, we go through the reality of a betrayal by one of his closest and dearest friends. And we've heard about the story of the garden where in the garden he wept and, and, and he cried out to God and he was longing for God to say, God, is there any other way that we can walk through this process? I've come to fulfill your will, but is there anything else? And we, we know about the garden because, because of the betrayal and the arrival in the garden. Even his closest friends could not pray with him. Then all of a sudden we find this arrest and the, the shift of the crowd who once were crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna. They, they moved to this place within just a very few short days of crucify him, crucify him. He goes through the beatings and he goes through all the whippings and the scourgings and we, we've heard about the crown and how about the personal abandonment of all of his family and friends. There were people that separated themselves from him and we read about the fact that it was even prophesied that some of those friends would deny him. We've learned about the, the thorny crown and, and the walk to Calvary. That was so weary and so difficult and we've read about and we've learned about the cross and the value of that cross and, 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 the, and the worth of that cross. And that cross, there was a man named Jesus who took his place between two sinners. He took his place between two thieves and we read about those stories. These are all stories that are not unfamiliar to us. We've heard about the stories of the suffering and the final moment, the final forsaken moment where he cried out to his father. He says, Dad, why have you forsaken me? Where God himself had to turn away from the sin that was placed upon him. We've read about the final forgiveness and we've studied and learned about his words and we've already talked about those three amazing words that he declared as he was on the cross. He looked to one fella and he said, hey, today you'll be with me in paradise. Goes through a moment and then he says, it's finished. So the cross moves us to that moment where he passed away. The Bible says that the veil was torn and the veil was rent. The Bible, the Bible gives us indication that all of a sudden that, that access to the Holy of Holies was now given. We go to the tomb and we recognize that in, a, that in this borrowed tomb, Jesus, the Savior of mankind, was placed. We study and we can read about the grieving disciples. And the wonder of the temple, if the temple, the temple, could the temple actually be rebuilt within three days? Now, now, whether or not you know it, I just shared with you in the last four or five minutes the gospel in its entirety. I shared with you the entirety of the purpose of Jesus, the why he came, and all that he went through. Obviously, the Bible says that all of the things that he spoke, all of the things that he declared, there wouldn't be enough books that could write it. But the truth of the matter is, so many in the world have never heard it. They've never believed it. And I don't know about you, but they've not accepted it. And as a result, they're never liberated because of it. The world lives in bondage. There, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a weight on the world. You go into a Walmart now and there's just no joy. There's just a, there's just a weariness in people's souls. There, there's just, there's, they're just fighting. But, but you know what liberated really means? It means to be released from the captivity that you were in. To get freedom. When we are liberated, like the video declared, it is, it is that Christ in us that is what sets the captive free. It's what allows us to move into that place of belief. But you know what happens? We've grown up in America where everyone has had a Christian experience. 
I was talking with somebody just the other day, and I'm from the north, and sometimes that's an indictment against me. I understand that. But being from the north, well, you know what? There is a north and a south, and you know, no, I'm not going to go there on Easter. But, but the truth of the matter is, up north, it's a little bit clearer who is and who isn't a believer. Down in the south, it's a little different. Everybody's been to church. Everybody says they know Jesus. But the reality is, is I would, I, I, I would probably press that just a little bit. If you haven't been to church in the last six months, I'm not saying you're not a believer, but you definitely don't have a home church. And welcome to Lighthouse. Amen. Welcome to Lighthouse. Amen. But you know what happened is this Christian experience, yet we're still living in bondage. We're still disillusioned by life's obstacles. We're still weighed down by the incarceration of our mind and our addictions and our failures. But we don't believe we can find peace and hope and truth. And, and this morning, we're, we're, I want to share just a, a post-Easter story from the books of Mark and the books of Luke and the book of Luke. You know, as I, as I was thinking about this and I started the sermon as the, the, before we went into the moment of worship, and I was, I was thinking about this morning, and this morning the Bible talks about it, whether you're reading out of the book of Mark, out of the book of Luke, and, and, and there's, a, there's a story, and the story goes like this. The women woke up early that day. We know who they were. They're identified, Mary, Mary Magdalene, and Salome, or Salome. So, 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 I said that wrong, Salome. And so, so you've got these three ladies, and they're running off, and you've got some folks that are traveling with them, but, but they're going to see Jesus, and they're, they're going to serve that tomb. And when they get there, they find that the tomb stone has been rolled away. And, and you know what's interesting about that story is, is, is the man says, the angel of the Lord says, he is risen. He's no longer here. And in, 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 in that story, the Bible says that, that, that they ran and, and they went and they found that the stone was rolled away. But when they entered, they did not find Jesus. You know, there's a world right now that hasn't found Jesus. That there's a world that, that hasn't experienced Jesus because they cannot see him. They have not sensed him. You know, it's interesting, in the book of Mark, there's another story, and it, and it kind of goes along the same passageways, and it talks about when, when, when Jesus is not at the garden, apparently he was taking a walk with a couple of fellas. And he kind of walked along the road with them, and, and as he's walking along the road with them, he spent some time with them. He's having a conversation with them. And then all of a sudden, according to Mark, it says in Mark 16, it says afterward, Jesus appeared in a different form unto them. While they were walking in the country, these two returned and reported it to the rest. And the Bible says in Mark chapter 16, verse 13, it says, but it said, but they did not believe him either. Did, did you know that, we're, we're going to finish this story in a little bit, but, but do you realize that between the women that didn't see him and the people that didn't believe him, these were the people that were supposed to know that this was happening. And, and, I, and I think to myself, if the church doesn't have a conviction or an understanding, the, the problem is when the church can't see, when the church can't believe, guess what? We have nothing to offer the people who really don't see and really don't believe. Does that make sense? And so it's so challenging to me as a, as a pastor to challenge the people to a place of asking you some questions. But I want to share a thought with you before we read this passage. I want you to go to Luke chapter 24. But we cannot be liberated until we believe he was liberated. Now, 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 now let that sink in for just a minute. If Jesus was still bound, you're still bound. Does that make sense? If Jesus was still incarcerated, we would still be incarcerated because no freedom would have taken place. No liberty would have ta transpired. And so it's so important that, that, that to, to understand that we cannot be liberated ourselves until we believe that he was liberated. These people walking along the road didn't walk in the freedom until they realized the freedom was there. 
He's not in the tomb, church, and he's not dead. All I need to do is say that to the church folk and I can get an amen. But let's go down, let's go down a little bit deeper in our story here in Luke chapter 24. I'm going to be reading out of the NIV. If you don't have it, you can watch right over my shoulder. But it says, now that same day, two of them were going to the village called Emmaus. About seven miles from Jerusalem, they were, they were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, I think that's how you say that, asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem? I, I can just imagine. Can you just imagine with me the, the, the response? Dude, where have you been? Didn't you know what was going on? But anyway, he goes on to say in Jerusalem, don't you know the things that have happened over the, uh, there in these days? What things, he asked, about Jesus of Nazareth? They replied. He, is a, he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people, the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all of this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body. They came and told us, that they had seen a vision of angels who had said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the woman, the women had said, but they did, but 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 him they did not see. He said to them, How foolish are you, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then even and, and then and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he began to explain to them what was, a, what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus act, acted as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Verse 30 and 31 is where I want to get us. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, gave thanks, and broke it, and began to give it to them, and their eyes were opened. Can you just imagine with me what was fixing, what was taking place? He's, he's breaking the bread, and all of a sudden they're going, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who is this? I know who this is. Wait a minute. He says their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. They recognized him. And so, so as, we're, as we're thinking about this story, this is a wonderful story. It's known as the walk to Emmaus. And, and as this walk is happening, there is no way for, for us to be liberated without knowing that we've been liberated. The, word, the world is searching for truth, church. They look for freedom in their careers through their education by obtaining their degrees and the hope of fame and the gathering of their fortune. The world seeks to solidify its beliefs, but yet it has not found. And because it is not found, when someone offers a way to be liberated, they do not believe. They do not see it and they do not recognize that this is the opportunity for freedom to be made manifest in their life. Do you understand that over the last several weeks we've talked about some truths and the truth is is this, is that, that it, without Jesus, without the cross, without the tomb, without the resurrection, there could be no liberty from sin because there had to be a final sacrifice. But the problem is, is that if we do not believe sin is a problem, there is no need for a liberator. And so I'm challenging you this morning to check your heart because we have been liber liberated from the power of sin and the penalty of sin which is death Amen. the second truth that we understand and know is that we've been we've been given this ability and authority to have power over the attack of the enemy and some of us may or may not understand who that enemy is but we know that there's a devil his 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 name is satan or lucifer 
And, and, he, and he's doing what he can to disrupt our lives. And, and we realize that even if we're believers, that the enemy doesn't like us. And he's doing his very best to keep us in bondage. But because of this cross and because of that tomb and because of that door being opened up, the reality is, is that you and I now have an authority even over the enemy with the power of Jesus living on the inside of us. See, there's a reality, guys, that, that we have that liberated people have been given access to God. We have the freedom to come to God and say, God, help me. God, deliver me. God, show me. God, guide me. But up until then, up until then, there was only one man that had privilege one time a year to go have a conversation with God like that. And the, and the reality is, is through this environment of the cross, as, as, as morbid as that seems, through the environment of the tomb, and as crazy as that thought is, the opening of that grave on that Sunday morning gave you and I the liberty to walk into the most holy of holy places. And the reality is, is that without all of this taking place, there could be no help or helper sent to us. There's three little things that I want to share with you this morning. But first, I want to say this. Many remain in bondage and are never liberated because they either cannot see or choose not to believe. Do you know I come in contact with Christians all the time that don't believe everything that's in this book? And the challenge that we have to be careful of is that when we choose to believe some things but not other things, it makes all of it suspect. I either have to accept what it says as truth and believe what it says. Because you know what? If I believe some things are true and other things are not, how do I know if what I'm believing is true and the other things are not? Because what if it's just the opposite around? What if what I'm believing is not true and what, if, what is not true is believable? That's the reality of this word. Every word of this book is inspired. And we have to come to the place that we either believe it or we don't. So let me ask you the first question. What's keeping you from seeing? What's keeping you from seeing? You know, if we, if we got honest with ourselves, the first bullet thought I have is, is that we can only be liberated when we're willing to see his motivation. You know, I, I was thinking about it, and I shared this on Friday night, and the reality is, is I do not believe three little nails held that man to the cross. The Bible says, and it says, I lay my life down. He says, I'm the one that makes the decision. I'm the one that places myself in this position. And, and so what happens is, is, is so oftentimes we don't see the value of what he did and what his motivation was. And can I simply tell you, motivation is the reason why something happens. Motivation is defined as the willingness of someone to do something. The willingness of a Savior to place himself upon a cross knowing that in three days he was coming out anyway. It, you know, the Bible says, and I shared this with you last year on Easter. It says, uh, he, said, he said, but for the cross, the joy set before me. Do you know that there was something on the other side of the cross that produced a joy on the inside of him? I have a pastor friend of mine that says that Jesus' joy was full when he went through the cross because he was waiting. He knew that there was joy on the other side. And so, so, so we have to stop and think. The world does not know and the world cannot see. But everything Jesus did was for you. And I think oftentimes we lose sight of that, and it sounds very selfish. It sounds very self-serving, but that's not my intention this morning. The greatest offering provided for mankind was motivated by one thing and one thing alone. It was the love of a Savior for his people. I firmly believe with all of my heart, had it been one person that had failed, the same thing still would have taken place. But how much grander is it because of the fact? That the world, the Bible says that, that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There's not a perfect one. No, not one. 
And so when I understand this, what is, the, what, is the, what is this love we're talking about in Matthew in the garden? We read in Matthew chapter 26, and we, he, the Bible says he went a little further and he fell on his face to the ground and prayed. And he said, my father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Jesus' expression, the, 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 heart of his, the heart of love came when it said, you know what, God, I know what we're fixing to walk through. Father, I know what we're fixing to do. But the reality is, is this. This is a hard decision, and this is difficult for me. But you know what? I love so greatly that I'm willing to complete it. We see an expression of his love and, 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 and that passage of a heart of love out of Matthew 26, 39. But we see an expression of his love. He says, you see, at just the right time when we were still powerless. The Bible goes on to say in verse number 8, it says, while we were still sinners. While we were powerless and sinners. We were powerless and sinners. The Bible says Christ died for us. It's, it, was, it was not just a heart of love. His expression of love put himself on that cross, went through all that he went through so that, he would, that we would know and understand his motivation. We need to understand, church, a, a people will not grasp or accept Jesus until they understand the magnitude of his love. He's not just a fixer of problems. He loves people in the midst of their problems. The problem is, is that so many people do not grasp his love. The second thing I want to ask you is this. What are you, what's keeping you from believing? What's keeping you from believing? We can only be liberated, number two. We can only be liberated when we believe that his sacrifice was enough. Guys, let me, let me say it to you this way. How many of us, how often do we try to do it on our own? You know, the only reason we do it on our own most of the time is because we don't believe. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> because we don't believe. We, we don't believe. And when we don't believe, let, let me read a passage. Can I, can I say this before I read this passage to you? He is enough. His love is complete, and, 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 and the sacrifice of what he did for you and me is enough. It's enough. See, in Luke chapter 24, verse number 21, look at what it says. But, he, but we had hoped. Now, we're talking about these two men again. They've been walking along, and all of a sudden, Jesus shows up, and he's been walking along, and look at what happens. They're explaining after all of the stuff that had happened in Jerusalem and all of the, and, and the crucifixion and everything that took place. Here's an indication that a lot of people don't believe. And that's this. We had hoped that he would be the one. Hmm. You ever been praying? You ever been asking God for something and it didn't work out and you go, well, maybe not. I had hoped, I'd hoped he'd have an answer for me. But you know, in this particular case, what I see is I see two men that were followers of Jesus, two individuals that knew everything that was happening, two individuals, but they come to this place called hope rather than knowing that he was the Savior. And, and so, so, so we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. We really, really hope, man, man, I had put some time into this. I had put some belief into this. And I was really desiring this. And what is more? It's the third day since all this took place. What, 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 why did they say that? Well, he was supposed to raise again. We were supposed to get him back. And you know what? Um, this is what we're hearing, but, but he's gone now. He's nowhere to be found. They can't even find him in the tomb. Some women ran ahead. The tomb was open and it was gone. Look at that. Can you imagine how much they had lost hope? And as a result, you and I, when we lose hope, we stop believing. When we lose hope, we stop believing. And, and so it goes on in verse 25. And he said to them, how foolish are you and how slow to believe. Can, can I just admit to y'all, there are times I am so stinking slow to believe. 
Is that okay to say that? I don't mean that to be disrespectful to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But there are times that I am just slow to believe. God, you're really going to work this out? You know, or I start to question. I start to wonder. I stutter, wonder why. And so what happens here in this moment, he says, how foolish of you and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to go through this? Paraphrase. I've tried church. I've tried religion. I'm not asking you today to try anything. I'm asking you just simply to believe in Jesus. I'm asking you to simply believe in Jesus, whether you're a believer in Jesus already, but you need to believe a little deeper. You need to believe a little harder. I'm asking you to see Jesus. I'm asking you to believe Jesus. Because we know and understand that the Bible says that Jesus was enough. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, it says that he appeared once and for all for the culmination of the ages. To do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. Jesus is enough. We have to believe that he is enough. Can I have my band come? On the first day of the week, the women went to the tomb and the stone was rolled away and he was not there like they said, like he said. And, but when she shared her findings, even the believers didn't believe. There are so many things that we could talk about in this word that we still don't believe. And church, as, as I speak to my brothers and sisters in Christ, my challenge to you is, is at some point we've got to start believing what it says. We have to start applying and getting our beliefs right because it's when we get our beliefs right that we really do experience freedom. The final thing that I want to share with you this morning is this. When we open our eyes and believe, the Bible says, and it records to us, the truth is recognized. In that short little passage of Scripture of Luke chapter, uh, Luke, Luke chapter 24, verse 30 and 31, Look at what happens. They finally saw, they finally believed, and look at what it says. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. And their eyes were open. Not only were their eyes open, well, that is Jesus. But look at what happened. They recognized him. See, I think there's so many believers in the church that still don't recognize Jesus. They still don't recognize the hope of eternity. They still don't recognize the, 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 the giver of life and the producer of hope. See, this is the hope of Easter. It's a man named Jesus. See, our declaration of faith, our declaration of faith in the resurrection lies in not remaining blinded or having our eyes hidden from the truth. Our lifestyles can hide us from the truth. Our attitudes and our actions, our habits and our addictions, all of those things can keep us from being liberated. The Bible says to the Jews who had believed in him, say believe. To the Jews who believed in him, Jesus said, if, I told, if, you, told, if you hold to my teaching." You are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth. See, we talked about it over the last two weeks, and this will be the third week I'll make a mention of it. I believe that we get so fixated on our doctrines, our theologies, our theories, our processes, and our programs that we never really see Jesus. That, that we never really grasp who he is for our lives. And therefore, even though we've accepted him, we still live in a level of bondage. I want to share one final thought with you. Liberated people see. Liberated people believe. They, they recognize the truth of who Jesus is and what this weekend is all about. Jesus did it all so that you would be liberated from what holds you back. When we are liberated, the hope of Easter comes alive. He is the undisputed king of the souls of millions of all colors and races in the world today. 
Men still are willing to die for him. He still makes unconditional demands on their lives. His selfless love is still the wonder of the universe. His power is still adequate to transform and recreate the sin-cursed soul. He is the author of peace, the savior of sinners, and the hope of the world. Death had claimed its victory The king of love had given up his life The darkest day in history There on a cross they made for sinners For every curse is blood One final breath and it was finished But not the end we could have known For the earth began to shake And the veil was torn What sacrifice was made As the heaven
every head bowed and every eye closed. Please, nobody looking around. I want to take just a moment. As I created that video, ultimately this was the question. What is keeping you from seeing and believing and recognizing the Savior of the world? the video depicted there's a lot of fighting there's a lot of sorrow there's a lot of anger there's a lot of disruption in families and in homes there's a lot of division in the world but Jesus came that we might know the truth and the truth might set us free so you're in this place today and I'm just going to ask a very private question for you. If you're here this morning and you don't know where you are in your walk with God, you're not sure, you're not certain. The Bible gives us the ability to be certain. We call it a believer's prayer, a new beginning prayer. But you're here and you'd like to say, Pastor Bob, would you pray for me? I'd like to receive Christ as my Lord and personal Savior, or I'd like to rededicate my heart to the Lord because I'm just not sure. All hail King Jesus. There's a day coming, church, that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and it's a whole lot better to make that decision on this side of eternity than the other. So if that's you and you just want me to pray with you, just raise your hand very quickly. Very quickly, is there anybody in the room? anybody in the room praise the Lord my second question is this did you know that Jesus when we accept him as our Lord and personal Savior we've been set free but sometimes we still feel like we're in bondage if that's you just raise your hand and I want to pray a blessing over you before we go to our last song there's a hand is there anybody else there's another hand you just feel like something's got you and you just can't let it go. Is there anybody else in the room? Anybody else in the room? Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you for all that you've done in our lives and all that this service was created for. Father, we've come to a place in our life, Father, where there's, there's things that seem to catch us. Father, the, the room is full of believers and we're grateful for that. But God, even as believers, we can still allow ourselves to feel like there's things that got us. So, Father, right now we just make a decision to give those things that got us back to you. And, Father, we trust and believe that you will and that you have. And that you are able to keep us liberated because of what you've done for us. Father, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. I'm so glad that you came today, and I'm so glad that you're part of Lighthouse Church. We're going to get ready to sing one final song for you. And I'm so excited that this is a great song, but, but we're going to do something a little differently on our special services and special events. Uh, we do offering a little bit different. If you've come prepared to bring your offering to the Lord, I'm just going to remind you that we'll have buckets at the exit that you're more than welcome to drop your offering in that bucket. If you want to use electronic format, you are more than welcome to do that. But in a moment, I'm going to invite you to stand. Don't Not yet, but I just want to share with you four simple things that are coming up. wanted to let you know this coming Thursday to all of our church members. We do have an, a, 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 a serve team rally that is coming up this coming Friday. If you are a volunteer, you're a ministry partner, you serve in any capacity, we'd love to see you on at 6.30 on April the 4th. If you haven't signed up on that crazy QR code thing or the text message you got from Tammy, please do that for me. There's two other big events that I want to let you know about. Number one is our men's event. We have a men's breakfast coming up on April the 20th. That's a couple of weeks away. Wanted to let you know that we're preparing for that. Uh, you, you can text breakfast to 615 59 
5544. Is that right? I'm looking at somebody. Did I get that right? I wanted to make sure I had that right. It wasn't on the slide. So you can text breakfast and you'll be fine. Also, our women's ministry is having our spring luncheon. That's coming up on April the 27th, the very next week. And you can do the same thing. You can spring, you can you can text luncheon, I believe is the word. Is that right? Luncheon. My, I can't see distance. It's my problem. Luncheon. Uh, and you can do that and do the same thing for that event as well. We need you to start signing up, ladies and gentlemen. Please start signing up now so we can make proper preparations. And then the last thing I just want to share with y'all. How many of you know, coming out of Easter, we've been set free. But I want you to meet Jesus next month. So our, near, our new series for the month of April is going to be called Meeting Jesus. And we're going to go through the story of how people met Jesus and the response that they had to meeting him. And I want to encourage you to do that. Would you stand to your feet as we sing our final song as we get ready to walk out the door? They're going to shout you. They're going to get you going. So let's participate for just a moment. All right, you guys ready to worship? We're going to celebrate our freedom in Christ. I want to jump a little louder than before sing. Oh, 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 oh. I want to jump higher than before. I want to scream a little louder than before.
no more, no more, no more shackles, no more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. We sing hallelujah, 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 No more shackles, no more chains, no 